What's going on, everybody? It's fragged out, swagged out, and you already know why I'm here. Starting off the new year, so I'm going to cover a new house for me, relatively new anyway. The house is the Elemental Fragrances, the creative director is Luke Solomon, and the inspiration is 1980 urban artist scene of New York, L.A., and Paris, mixed with lazy days on the seashores of Morocco, plus socially driven dinner parties. So... You get all that mixed up together it is stylish it is chic and it is sexy and that's what the company does here with their fragrances and nothing really encapsulates the idea of what luke has head out to do here and there's one particular quote and i like what he said here he said i want to create fragrances that help empower men and women to reveal their passionate sides nothing makes a man or a woman sexier or more beautiful than the confidence that comes from within when they smell godlike. And anyone who sets out to accomplish that, I want to smell the final product. And I have it here in front of me. So before anything else, I will state that um, the Elemental Fragrances did reach out to me. So these are samples that were provided by the house themselves. However, I'm going to keep it real. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Um... But I will kind of give you a little teaser. For the most part, everything here is solid, super dynamite. Um, some I love way more than others, obviously, as it tends to go. And um, since it is nine fragrances that I have here out of their, I believe, 17 fragrance um, catalog right now. So just a little over half, right? Um, I had to, for the sake of time, kind of categorize everything and how, you know, I... I perceive it in my head based on scents. So um, I have over here the, what I like to call the gourmand leaning fragrances. Um, on this side, I have the flirty kind of, when I wear this, I'm clearly trying to let you know, I'm trying to do grown things. Fragrances over here have the really executive kind of mature smelling ones. I have a little group here and it's the guys do whatever they want. This one I'll, I'll explain later. And then there is the one fragrance that just was not for me um and out of nine fragrances that's not that's actually really good um and and it's not for me not because it's a bad fragrance because it was made badly because it smells bad or it's off-putting it's just um it's kind of fresh offering clean kind of smelling um smelled it a couple of times it's just it's not what i look for in a fragrance but it is a very well-made fragrance so if you're into um, that cleaner kind of uh, floral smelling fragrance, then this might be in your lane. So um, I'll get that one out of the way first. And that is Rich Folks. So Rich Folks, um, I guess it's kind of what it says. It's, it's a Rich Folks kind of, I got money smell. Um, but I feel like this is more like the boring money. Um, this this doesn't tell me this is sexy money. This is This is money. You probably had money all your life. I'm, I'm more about that new, reckless, sexy, wild money. So this one is not the one for me. Not a bad fragrance. She doesn't do it for Rico. But speaking of money, speaking of sexy money, I'm going to go into the ones that I call kind of like my grown, more executive fragrances and mogul. So nothing says money like a mogul. Someone who sets out to create their own thing and creates their own empire. Mogul which I have right here. This, now this right here, this is a beautiful fragrance. This is um, a screams of money, but in the right kind of way, not the old boring way. This says I, I have money, I have money to burn. I can go to clubs, I'm out there, I'm getting, I'm attracting people. Um, Mogul is, I wanna say is in my top three fragrances of the, uh, of the entire collection so far. Um, just an amazing fragrance and I don't want to really get too deep into um, everything that each fragrance has only because th there are nine of them. But I will tell you that the notes here are cedar, amber, musk, bergamot, and oud wood. So, no. Yes. Mogul, that cedar, gives it a nice creamy um, base for the entire fragrance. I don't. It doesn't smell too oudy at all. So, it's just adding another level of woodiness that amber um the musk the bergamot it all comes together so well it's not overly sweet 
Um, it's not overly woody. Like I said, when you smell it, it smells mature. It smells like something a grown man who has his stuff together and run things wears. This is an attractive fragrance and it definitely says something about your character. Um, so use wisely. And in that same vein, and this is probably, again, this is also going to go in my top three, Oud People, man. So Oud People, and I, I, I've been, yeah, I've been smelling them all, all over again today. I had to got to them when um when they first got here but oud people is um this is an easy oud this is an easy oud this is not an oud that's going to be challenging to anybody this is not going to smell animalic on anyone um so here you're going to get the egyptian sandalwood black um frankincense agarwood and chocolate it's not You can probably find it gourmand leaning. However, this is not a gourmand fragrance. The chocolate here gives the already woody kind of base a sweet character. Um, but again, with that Egyptian sandalwood, with the frankincense, with the oud, it's going to be a very mature fragrance, but it says I'm mature, but I, I know how to get down. Like this is a sexy, very mature fragrance. This is for a grown person. This is for somebody who wants to attract attention, but not necessarily one of those reckless kind of um, fragrances. And when I talk about reckless fragrances, I'm talking about when you're doing too much. And when I talk about doing too much fragrances, I'm talking about these two right here. So um, the first one, and the name says it all, is Cashmere Sex. Cashmere Sex is going to be plum, fig, and white musk. And that plum and that fig working together, you have them kind of purple, reddish, <laughs> juicy, fruity um, elements to it. It's very flirty, it's very youthful. So these two, the, the two I have in my hand right here, are the two um, most useful uh, fragrances out of the collection. Not to say that you're out of place when you wear it, but again, it, it does scream super flirty, super, sexy smell club kind of vibe this is not for the boardroom this is not for a briefing at work this is not for anything like that this is definitely um it sets a tone it says i'm here to have fun i'm here to get wild um cashmere sex fruity light um just juicy overall vibe and it definitely fits the the name and then we have erotic ones who i mean <laughs> With, the, with, with those names, you, you can't, it doesn't give you too much space to, to let the imagination go wild. You have Red Current, you have Jim, and you have Himalayan Bamboo uh, and Pink Peppercorn. And this one right here is another one of those that, as yeah, as soon as you smell it, it, sm it has this almost candy-esque kind of vibe. Um, <sighs> the gin gives it, it doesn't give it a booziness, but it gives it... I guess the closest thing to booziness without like maybe like a cocktail um with a lot of fruity um um syrups in it it just smells really really um fruity uh clean and even though it is clean it's not the kind of clean that I'm like it, it's it's too musky for me this is just the right amount of flirty fruity kind of smell to it that red currant really helps amp it up and make it something that calls for someone's attention if you're wearing this in the club you're definitely going to get noticed. Um, this is a date fragrance, so very similar to um, Cashmere Sex. It's it's what you want to wear to a date, um, hoping that the date ends um, in your favor. Um, and then I'm going to move to the Gourmands. So I, I'm not saying that the brand themselves call these Gourmand fragrances. I'm saying that um, when I was smelling them, th this is what I get out of it. So the first one is going to be Star 6-9, yeah. <laughs> so, oddly enough, um, Star 6-9 is not the favorite uh, of mine of this house. And after reading about it and seeing some other um, reviews about Star 6-9, I thought it would be, um, it's just that Oud People is really impressive. Like, Oud People is really impressive. So, it's, it's hard to, but this one does have sandalwood, caramel, um, leather, and um, amber, amber musk in it. It, it is sweet. It is gourmand. It, it sets out to do what gourmand is supposed to do, and it does it well. 
But in, in, in nine fragrances, we have so many options. It's hard to pin down the one thing. And um, this just didn't make it in the top, top, top tier. Um, it's great. I like it. It is a great gourmand. If you like gourmands, you are going to love this. That caramel is amazing. That sandalwood just blends so well with it, giving an overall really sweet, um, creamy body throughout the entire life of the fragrance. And that amber, you know, that you know, if you have amber, you have caramel, you almost always have a good combination set up for an awesome gourmand. And this is no exception. Star 69 is an amazing gourmand fragrance. Um, the other one, and I had to actually take it out of the uh, the bottle that it came in because the cap wouldn't go back on. So I put it in my own decanter here, on uh, my, my own sprayer rather. And this one right here is called uh, a Morris. And this one is one of the more interesting ones. Um, it does have this gourmand facet to it, but it also has uh, lotus and wild orchid. So it has, when it opens up, it gave me this very milky, kind of vanilla, almost eggnog leaning kind of thick, creamy vanilla smell to it. Um, so it opens up very gourmandous to me. And as the the fragrance starts to dry down on my skin, and I have it right here because I was so bugged out about it, it gets more floral. Um, I'm not a fan of florals and I'm definitely not a fan of white florals. However, the the vanilla and the amber on top really help drive this fragrance. So even though it starts to get that white floral scent, it never changes too much to where it becomes something very floral or it doesn't become a floral fragrance. At least for me, it keeps a good balance of that creaminess and that vanilla and that ambery vibe added with flowers. So it's going to remain a gourmand leaning fragrance that has the ability to change on your skin and turn to something a little more floral down the line as opposed to Star 69, which is through and through a gourmand and you can't go wrong. Um, with either one of them, but if you want to stick to gourmand and you don't want to play around with the possibilities of how your your body um, dictates the change of smell on you, then you stick with Star 69. If you want to open up yourself to that possibility of that floral combo, then um, yes, uh, Amoris is a another great um, fragrance. Now, the ones that I say are, are in their own because they don't really fall into any category. The other ones um, I have here, fantastic effing rose and it doesn't say effing it says the actual word but i don't want to offend anybody if you're offended by that kind of thing um this rose right here is is exactly that it's it's, it's the reason why it didn't fall into any category of any other any um of the other fragrances that i got to smell here um this is a very rich strong strong rose but it's a clean like when i smell this in the in the opening especially and I'm telling you, it's sealed and you smell it um, permeating through. Um, there is this really red, luscious rose smell that comes off of it. Um, and I will say this, rose is one of those things that has been done since forever. It's a Parisian classic type of um, fragrance, snow or flower to use. And when you smell it, it's almost always doing the same thing. Uh, this right here definitely set itself apart. Um, it has the black frankincense, it has vanilla in it, and it has oud in it. And the combination here makes it so different from a lot of roses that, that I've ever smelled. Um, it's not a rose oud combo, by the way, so it's not the typical when you see oud and you see rose together. That's what it is, not at all. Um, the frankincense are not very um, overly Middle Eastern leaning. It's just a perfect combination of every single thing supporting the rose itself. So at no point does it become like an oud rose. Um, the frankincense aren't going to make it too strong or too spicy. Um, the vanilla doesn't make it anything near gourmand, but rather it gives it some, some sweet facets. So at the center of this entire thing, you have that fantastic effing rose. And then you have all these other things around it the oud, the frankincense, the vanilla, that really give it different dimensions. You have them, those sweet um, wasps that'll come up. You have the, the slightly spicy and woody base in here. Overall, one of the, like, when you talk about original use of rose, um, something that's really gonna stand out in fragrances today, especially because, you know, it's hard to come up with something new to do with rose. This is definitely it. Um, fantastic effing rose. 
just a standout, stands by itself, even in their entire collection. One of the first ones um, that I reached out to Luke and told him, like, I haven't got through everything yet, but this is one of the ones that's standing out and to today that stands true. And lastly, it's Smoke of the Gods. And this one right here is a really special fragrance. <sighs> yeah, this one right here, you get... So, I'll start off by saying this. Um, marketing and narrative are very important in any genre, and any, anything you do. And sometimes you smell something and you don't know... Um, you don't know what to think of it. You just know it's good. This is good. And the name really helped, you know, take me in the direction of what they were offering here. And what they're offering here is that very almost spiritual connection kind of fragrance. You, When you smell it and you let it settle on your skin, you get that um, kind of that feel of incense burning in the background that this is not for going out. Not for me anyway. This is I, I could wear this at home by myself and just reflect on whatever, even if if it's um, reviewing other fragrances. This is just such a, a calming, um, mature uh, fragrance. It's It stands alone, just like um, the effing rose does, in a very different way. It doesn't really fall into, you know, it, it, I guess you could, it is gonna be woody at the end of the day, but it's in a very different way. When it opens up, it has like this almost already burnt wood kind of smell where the smoke is coming off of it and maybe that wood that was burnt had incense on it where it gives off this really nice temple vibe not like an old cathedral but rather just a lot of spices and burnt wood um something where the smoke just you know covers you and takes you to another place this one has one of the most transformative kind of um effects as far as the uh, the fragrance taking you to another place or connecting you to an idea um, would. So, and this is um, the Smoke of the Gods. So, that was my attempt to do nine fragrances in a nutshell, and that was 17 minutes. So, not that much of a nutshell. Overall, like I said, amazing house, uh, amazing fragrances. I can't say anything better because, again, even the one that really wasn't my vibe, I smell the quality in the fragrance. It's, it's just not, um, it's too clean, too light, too, too after the shower kind of, uh, smell for me, um, didn't do what I wanted to do. But then again, like I said, if you give me nine things to smell and eight of them are amazing, you're doing a hell of a job already. So, um, salute to Luke Solomon and the Elemental Fragrance, uh, company. That is my overall review of this house. I'll probably do a live later on with one of my peers who's had the, um, the opportunity to smell them as well. And we can go deeper into individual fragrances that really stand out. But if you watch this long, thank you very much for sticking by and um, listening to me ramble about nine different fragrances in one video. Thank you very much for your time. If you would be so kind as to like and comment, please do. Fragged out, swagged out, and I'm out.